brought down by history's greatest netrunner, creator of daemons. He was a true savant, super hacker, legend Rach Bartmoss. Rache broke into the toughest systems on Earth and committed acts of corporate espionage with relative ease. He took on Netwatch and never lost, and claimed to be aware of the existence of aliens. Despite being the best, Bartmoss was eventually nailed by Black Ice, that placed his heart into continual fibrillation. He barely managed to activate his cryogenic celestial parachute backup system in time. The result froze his body, leaving his hyperactive mind still jacked into the net. The Bartmoss was too paranoid to tell anyone to retrieve his body, should he be killed. Thus he became a chunk of frozen meat, deteriorating in a cryogenic freezer disguised to look like a refrigerator, while still managing to be the best netrunner in the business. Motherfucker up a sad mass. That's Rach Bartmoss. Rach who? What do you mean, Rach who? Bartmoss, for shit's sake. Gonk who fucking trashed the first net? Data crash? Rabbids? No pings? Jesus, what am I doing here? Who are you even? I'd recognize that mug anywhere. Wanted posters all over town back in 2020. Public enemy number one, dead or alive. Half the city was on the hunt. Poor bastard. Ended up here as a dead rat in a cool box. Till some circuit blew and he thawed like so much meat. During the fourth corporate war, Bartmoss was adamant against working for any corpus no matter how tenuous the connection. But Alt Cunningham convinced him to join her in hunting for Soul Killer. Arasaka finally tracked down the apartment Bartmoss was hiding in, where they would face an opponent, some consider even more dangerous than Adam Smasher. What the fuck are you talking about? Deathwish. That is Deathwish, the Cyber Kitty, outfitted with Titanium Rippers and Sand Devastan for good measure. Deathwish protected the refrigerator that the frozen body of Botmos rested in. Data crash virus, shattered cyberspace, broke the net into a scattered mosaic of isolated local nets. With the death of Botmos, a dead man switch activated the data crash virus that had been dormant in every computer connected to the old net, which rewrote all files into gibberish. As for the AIs who attacked Lucy, these were rabbits. Roving autonomous Botmos interface drones. Raish felt that his pangalactic brilliance was limited by his intellect being in one place at a time. Thus he saw the rabbits as a means of spreading his seed. Each rabbit was programmed to be just like Raish. Physical appearance and demeanor almost indistinguishable from their creator. They encapsulated Raish's conceited braggadocio perfectly, but were in fact more dangerous, for they lacked his fear of mortality and thus could push beyond the limits of their creator's chaotic personality. With the death of Botmos, the rabbits evolved into AIs that killed any netrunner attempting to explore the secrets of the old net. Good evening, Night City! Joining us in the studio tonight is Maria Jimenez, reporter for the Pacific and a cyberspace specialist, and of course, the author of her new book, The Undoing Fall of the First Net. Maria, rumor has it that you were once a net runner. Mm, is that right? Well, is it true? <laughs> oh, and there it is, folks. Now, the question is, Maria, do you still go to cyberspace? No. Promised myself I'd never set foot in there again. And why's that? Because I don't want to fry my brain to a crisp. <laughs> cyberspace was never safe to begin with. But after Rach Bartmoss unleashed rabbits, 
The place turned into a hellscape overnight. Hell? As in lakes of fire and demons poking you with pitchforks? Uh, no. I'm talking about malware that can flatline you in a matter of nanoseconds. AIs that creep into your brain via your connection. Data vortexes that would make a sane person lose their mind. Sounds spooky, but someone must still be in there, right? Mm-hmm. Probably overchipped corpos in cryo suits using up half the energy grid. Or just crazy people. All right, but let's say I, Ziggy Q, jacked myself into cyberspace. Your brain would implode. Literally. The internal pressure in your head had increased three times over. Without a dedicated... Let's forget about that for a sec. What would I see in those few nanoseconds before I flatline? All depends on you. Cyberspace is data flowing straight into your brain. It bypasses all of your normal senses. Sight, touch, hearing. You'd have to visualize it somehow. Otherwise, well, you know what happens. You'd see some clouds resonating, pixels falling in a drizzle. It's hard to describe. Fascinating. And just a tad disturbing. After all, this is cyberspace we're talking about. But us ordinary netizens, we don't have anything to worry about, right? <laughs> I think you're going to have to reread my book, Siggy. That I will, Maria. And everyone else watching should do the same. Maria Jimenez's book, The Undoing, Fall of the First Net, available tomorrow in stores near you. Thanks for being on the show with us, Maria. Well, Night City, our time's up. Till next time. Nikura! Taste the love! So, people, listen up. I've got a story to share with you. Recently, I've been hearing about this monk that's been walking around nice city streets, healing the sick, but only those he deems worthy. Some of my listeners seem convinced that it's none other than Rache Bartmoss. Huh, Rache Bartmoss. Yeah, you know, the guy, the chief architect of the net, and later its badass destroyer. The rumor has always been he got taken out by a kill set in the early days of the fourth corporate, but no one ever took responsibility for that strike. Is it possible Bartmoss set his creations wild and faked his own death? Did he bring down the net he created because it had turned into another tool the corporations could use to track us and ultimately completely subjugate us? <laughs>